first want to start off by asking, how are you doing today, right now in this very moment? Just how are you? I'm actually, I'm feeling a bit tired and exhausted. <laughs> it's been a long season and it's always difficult after a championship to kind of have that same drive and focus at the end of end part of the season mm -hmm. so it becomes very mental at this stage and I've been away from my family for for a minute and <laughs> yeah and I'm missing home and my son started you know classes yesterday and I'm missing that so it's so many things that's happening but yeah <laughs> I, I, I totally get that. I'm not a mom, but I'm an auntie. And so I'm actually flying to go see my nephew to surprise him for his birthday. I'm like, I can't miss another birthday. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like so excited to see him. So I get yeah. it. I get it. Um, so as a child growing up in Kingston in pursuit of your dreams, what did perseverance look like for you? Um, what did the perseverance look like to me at that time? Honestly, it was just surviving, you know, doing what I could each day to survive and watching my mother, especially doing everything that she could to make sure food was on the table, you know, to make sure that I was off to school and I didn't miss a day because she believed that, you know, this was going to be the change this one, this was going to be it. And she had to make sure that she did everything to make sure that food was on the table. It didn't matter at that time what it was. It wasn't fancy most days, mm -hmm. but it did its job. And I think for me, when I saw that, I just knew that to get to where I need to in life, I had to survive each day, do what I need to do to survive. So that's what I think perseverance looks like to me growing up. And so now that you're one of the most decorated athletes in history, <laughs> your native country of Jamaica, does perseverance mean something else for you now? Um, somewhat. It's, you know, for me right now, it's almost as if when I saw my mom when I was younger, making sure that she was doing everything she could to survive. I'm surviving, but I'm also have goals and dreams that I'm trying to, to, to achieve. And even though it comes with, you know, the different impact or odds that are against you, I'm still very committed. So it's different. It's chasing those dreams and making sure that, you know, I'm able to achieve the things that I set out for myself, even when others have something different for you or a different opinion of what you should be doing. And you said that not only like you're surviving, but I feel like you're thriving too. We can't forget that part. Not just surviving. Definitely. <laughs> I'm definitely thriving for sure, because it's not easy to, as a woman, especially to do, you know, what I'm doing right now at a level up which I'm doing it because for so long, you know, a lot of times we are told that, that when we get to the age of 30, that's the time you should step away and you know give open or open the door to a new generation but why can't you open the door for a gener new generation while doing you know your your best or what you can to achieve your you know your success for sure and speaking of that <laughs> had a record-breaking performance at this year's olympics so hey how did you prepare for the road to tokyo as well as this question is twofold. How does it feel to be a part of ushering a new day in women's track and field? You know, preparing for Tokyo, given the pandemic was very difficult for me because it's almost like you have this goal and this, you know, time frame in mind. Like this is what I'm chasing and this is the time that I have to do it. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, coming off 2019, when, you know, I won the world championship, you're on this high and you're so motivated and you're so ready. And then, you know, Tokyo kind of went postponed, <laughs> you know, and you, you understood, you know, you, you're understanding at that point, but you're still so disappointed because I'm looking at it like, oh, I just have this amount of time and I need to get this done in this amount of time. And so it was hard to kind of mentally, you know, tell myself that, okay, this one year is off. So I'm got to make sure that I'm still committed. I'm still driven. I'm still looking forward to, you know, getting to Tokyo. 
And then I'm a mom, you know, and it's juggling being a mommy while in a lockdown, being at home with your son and trying to do the best you can. So at times I, my training was just disrupted because I have to be home, making sure that I have to either stand and become a punching bag for my son or <laughs> some, or I'm outside finding creative ways to entertain him, but still finding creative ways to stay fit and healthy and you know participate in my strength exercise so I remember like now my on my porch outside it's a gym I had to convert that into a small gym to get the job done I was running in my complex to make you know I, I've never really done that before like everybody was now getting their first hand of me running around the, the, the block you know trying to get my workout in and doing my core work and still heading to the track so it was very difficult to maneuver but you know I wasn't the only one doing it there were athletes all over the world who had to make do with what they had at home and I think for me you know mentally I had to just focus on zoning and not lose the mental part of it because at that time it became a mental game to make sure that your head is still in the game and you're still prepping you're still ready so it was very difficult to prepare but I'm glad I wasn't off for sure yes and the other part of that question um how does it feel to be part of ushering an, in a new day in women's track and field? Um, it's, it's exciting. It's actually very exciting to have been competing for so long and to finally see the day that, you know, women's sprinting is at the heights of heights, you know. It's something that's talked about every day and I'm so glad to be a part of that conversation and to see women stepping up to the plate and creating, you know, uh, narratives of, you know, greatness and, you know, competing and, you know, still having, you know, being you know, tolerant of every other thing that's going on, but I'm grateful to be a part of it. And it feels good, you know, to, as women, to constantly compete at the level that we're competing and to be seen, you know, to finally be seen for what we bring to the table, you know, for the, the how we have raised the game and elevated our sports and our different events. And it definitely feels good to have that, to be a part of that conversation and, Hopefully, you know, when it comes, when it's time for me to go, the history will be there and the, the legacy will have been set for other young women who are coming up to understand that, you know, this is what we have created for you. And we're ho hoping that you will continue to build on that. Yes, for sure. I feel like the legacy definitely has been set. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want to take a step back because you actually mentioned um, preparing in lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. and quarantine. So during that time of quarantine, uh, what did you learn about yourself? Oh, what did I learn about myself? Oh, what did I learn? I definitely think I learned that I needed space. You know, I've always thought that I could just keep going and going and going. And I realized that I needed that space for myself to kind of unwind mentally because I've always been on the go. You know, I've been an on the go person for a long time. And when the lockdown came and I couldn't actually go everywhere that I needed to go and it wasn't happening, I realized that, OK, then. So this is a time you kind of have this quiet time. And you need that space to kind of mentally, you know, declutter and de-stress and everything. And I think that's what I realized that, OK, I never had time for myself. I was always busy doing, 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 but never really focusing on who I am and, you know, what I wanted to do or what was my expectation of myself. It was just always a set Thing, a set routine for me I've always been up at five or four in the morning I'm at training I go to the gym I pick my son up from school and it has always been that that I never really took time to sit you know and just think and to relax and have that space for myself yeah sit and be still I feel like sometimes we underestimate that like just I definitely do <laughs> I've always I've always thought that you know having a lot of things to do kind of preoccupies the mind and it you know you just have something to do so it's you're going but then there's beauty in stillness you know there's beauty in having that time to to reflect 
you know, and to kind of just be. <laughs> and I think that, the, the, you know, the pandemic definitely did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, you, you summed it up perfectly. There's beauty and stillness. Um, yeah. I, I, I learned that within recent years. I always thought I had to be on the go, 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 busy, busy, busy. Because then that means I'm doing something. I'm being productive. Yeah. <laughs> Not always the case. For sure. For sure. And what has been your proudest moment away from track and field? Um, my proudest moment, I actually have two that, you know, are, yeah. I mean, happy my son was like the top of the list, like, you know, having my son and being a mommy and going home to him and raising him the best way I can because of, you know, especially because of my childhood and how I grew up, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything the right way and the best way for him. But then, you know, I remember when I, 2008, when I came from the Olympics, I hadn't started my degree as yet you know my bachelor's as yet and I remember coming back and I could finally afford to pay for my degree <laughs> and I was so excited and my friends were like who wins the Olympic and decides that they want to go to school <laughs> right and I remember like listen this was so big for me because it means I'm more than just an athlete you know and I was I was plagued by you know something like that growing up where persons automatically assume that because you're from an inner city and because you're an athlete there's nothing in your head you know and nobody in my family at that time graduated with a degree like my mom didn't have didn't finish high school my father my brothers nobody you know so it was it was almost like breaking that you know breaking that uh what you call curse that generational curse you know and I think it was a proud moment when I was able to do my degree as a full-time student from 2008 to 12 while coming back after winning after defending my title in 2012 I had to come back home to finish my practical exam and I remember walking across the stage to collect my degree and my mom was in the she was in the audience and I remember like I felt so proud of myself I'm like oh my god I did it you know I'm not just a girl from an you know from the inner city I'm not just a girl who does track I am a you know graduate you know I have, I have a degree and it felt so empowering you know to know that I was able to achieve my goal as an athlete and also achieve that out of the class um, in the classroom as well and combining both made me a better person so that moment was also super super proud for me well I'm so glad that you didn't lose sight of your personal goals as well um you know yeah. professional achievements I actually was just speaking to a group of students yesterday and they asked me you know do you have any advice for graduating seniors and they were like, we're so stressed, you know, the job market. I'm like, well, first and foremost, celebrate this moment of being a college yeah. graduate. <laughs> that is a huge I tell you, I, but It's funny that, you know, most of my, my, my friends in, when I was in college, most of them, they were like, they're not coming to graduation. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal for them. Oh, I got my degree. It was a huge deal for me to walk across the stage because I want everybody to see me you know to see me look at me a young girl from Waterhouse crossing the stage not that there are not others who are from inner city crossing the stage but it meant so much more to me and it meant a lot to my mother it meant a lot to the girls in my community my family it meant everything and to be able to I remember I got my first A in one of my courses and a lot of my, a lot of my, some of my classmates, not a lot of them, some of them actually thought I got an A because I'm an athlete. So at times, yes, at times it can be so hard to prove yourself, you know, kind of things. And I think, you know, that was me proving that I was so much more than what you saw on the track. Yeah. Okay. Wow. People and their crazy assumptions. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I read in a previous interview that your lifelong passion is helping underprivileged kids born of your own experience. 
And I feel mm-hmm. like just you setting that example and that blueprint, even us talking about graduation, that's a, a huge example. But can you speak to me more about this and how you're utilizing your platform to achieve this mission? So, you know, as I said, I'm from a, a single parent, my mother, three, um, two brothers, and it was just us. And, you know, going to school was difficult at times. I remember getting uh, like $50 sometimes to take the bus and to pay for lunch. And to go to school with $50 at 15, it was like no money. And you, I went to a very good school. And I remember having met this woman, Jean Coke, when I was, I went to the pen relays at first and she just decided to sponsor my education and pay for my books and my uniform and everything. And it was as a result of her kindness, you know, that I'm able to see that, you know, for us as as, as human beings, we're supposed to we're supposed to pour into each other if we can. If you can help, you can lend a helping hand, you're supposed to. I think we should all have that inclination to do so. And I remember she didn't know me. She didn't know what the future hold. You know, she didn't know anything about me or what I was going to achieve or accomplish or anything like that. But still, she saw me, you know, and wanted to invest in me. And she made sure my education was paid for. She made sure I was okay. I had food. I didn't have to worry about anything. And I think it was because of her kindness. I decided to start my Pocket Rocket Foundation where I assist student athletes in Kingston to give them a full ride scholarship to school. We pay for their tuition, their books, their uniforms. If they need a laptop, we got them, you know, to make sure that they don't have to be in a similar circumstances where they're worried about food or they're worried about where they're getting their uniform. If their mother can afford to buy a laptop or to send them to school, I wanted them to have that, you know, um, funding to do that. And it was because of, you know, the lady Jean Coke who decided to, 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 to sponsor me, you know, so that's where everything kind of started because when I was growing up in Waterhouse, I never really had anyone. You know, I never saw my way out. I didn't know what I what was the next move or the next step or what I was able to. I didn't know anything. I was just there, as I said, surviving. You know, that was the game that I never... I remember when I was in first form, which is seventh grade, and our teacher asked us to stand and say our names and say what we want to become in the future and I only said I wanted to become a lawyer because everybody else in the class was saying doctors and I thought it was okay I would just go with them but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do I never had that hope you know and she gave me that hope and I wanted to make sure that I'm giving student athletes in Jamaica that same hope that same dream to understand that they too can make it from their circumstances they too can evolve from their current situation they too can transcend everything that they thought presently you know about the things that they can accomplish I want to give them that opportunity to focus on school and to focus on whichever sport they do at school and just make sure that they balance both you know and create an avenue and era for them so that's where the privilege you know that's where everything came from for me was because of that one woman you know and I have a community center as well that I equipped with computers because connectivity at in Jamaica is not very good and not a lot of parents can afford it and I know for sure because I've been in the community and I've been I've, I've lived there. So not a lot of persons can afford it. So I wanted to make sure that I had a, a center where they can go, you know, because a lot of times you can't study at home. There's no space. There's no there's so much distraction. So I provided them with an area you know, where they can go and they can sit and they can get their schoolwork done. They have access to internet and it's free. There's somebody there, there's an assistant there to help them with their homework or their classwork. So, you know, that's the platform that she has given me. And through the resources, you know, whether it's my sponsors, Nike or Grace Kennedy or Digicel, I'm able to, you know, help or to give a helping hand to make sure that I'm creating, you know, young men and young women 
of worth. Yes. Wow. That that was a lot of good, <laughs> good <laughs> like inspiration, uh, encouragement. It was just so much. And that's very amazing uh, of you to thank you that helping hand back to your community, back to your native country. So and you speak so highly of Jamaica, <laughs> like that's your foundation, you know. So, yeah. You know, why are you proud to be Jamaican? I'm proud because it's, you know, it's our, it's our culture. It's almost like we're family, not, we're not, con- a lot of us are not connected or not, we're not connected by blood, but we're connected, you know, through our shared vision and our legacy of making things work for us, the small things, because we don't have a lot of big things, but we have always known to work with what we have. And, you know, there's a saying in Jamaican, we turn uh, we make our hands turn fashion. <laughs> That's like a saying that we take anything and we take it and we make it into fashion. We make it come alive. And I think as Jamaicans, that's why I'm so proud because we work with what we are given. You know, we don't, we are not looking. Yes, we want to make sure that we have the infrastructure. We want to build. We want to make sure that our kids will come and see the richness. We'll see our legacy. We'll see our culture. But we use what we have, and we have always done that. And we always seem to find a way to stand out with the little that we have, whether it's in our music, whether it's in our sports, whether it's in our fashion, or or as a people, we have always known to stand out, you know, and to make an impact, no matter how small. And that's what I'm grateful for as a Jamaican. It's whatever I have, no, no matter how small, it's always going to be or be created into something huge and impactful. For sure. Um, I, one of my best friends from college, she's Jamaican. So I, like everything you said <laughs> <laughs> was extremely accurate. <laughs> and there have been rumblings about your retirement in 2022. Is there any truth to that? well all right let me tell you at first at first I'm like okay um 2022 was gonna be it because Oregon is like right there and all my family and friends they can come and they can support and you know a girl can just roll out and be all that and go but then I'm running 10 six. <laughs> I'm the, I'm still competing at the highest level. I'm still, you know, breaking records. I'm still, you know, winning medals. I'm still competing and I'm competing aggressively and making an impact. So right now, I'm see, I'm willing to see where it goes after 2022 for sure. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, with it. That's that's okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, you know it, it's I think for me it's worth my time to see where this takes me mm-hmm. I never imagined that at 34 almost 35 I'll be running 10 six it's never heard of you know it's crazy to think that I'm doing things that I thought I would be doing in my 20s <laughs> right so for me to have a to be in this position and to have this purpose, I believe it's necessary for me to continue that to show other women that they too can break barriers. You know, they too can have that moment and have that time, even if it hasn't happened, you know, yet. You know, I want them to look in the mirror. When they look in the mirror, they can say, it's not today, but it can be tomorrow. You know, so I want them to have that vision. So for me, creating that narrative and having that story for them to read or to see is just incredible because I want them to have that. I want them to know that, listen, Shelly Ann, if I want them to quote me in school to say that when a teacher say, oh, you can't do that. Well, Shelly Ann did it at 34, so I can. So I'm excited about the conversation that will be our own ageism when it comes to female athletes and you know and their their careers i'm excited about that because for far too long a lot of us decide to exit because people told us you know it's time and you're still at the heights of your career why not continue to show what you you know can give to the sport for sure and if it's 
2022 or even 10 years from now or 20 years <laughs> from now that you retire what's next I'm, go- I'm gonna be at the line with my stick and I'm gonna say let's go <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious so so what will be the next chapter of Shelly Ann Fraser Price um, so I'm very, as, as you know, I'm very serious about community building. You know, I'm super, super serious because I believe that a lot of raw and touched gems are in our communities that, but they need to be uprooted and to be polished and to send, sent out. And like, because I'm one of those persons, you know, so I want to make sure that I'm continuing to invest in my community. I want to make sure that I'm provide, providing resources and opportunities for them to, you know, to make that step and to, you know, to get to the next level. So I'm very passionate about community building. Yeah, I'm also still passionate about my foundation. Very, very passionate because I'm thinking of hosting seminars for you know, PR and etiquette seminar for a lot of my Jamaican athletes back home and sports. So I'm really looking forward to having a greater impact when it comes to athletics in my country. And yeah, I'm still thinking about going back to school because I started, I started my master's in applied psychology when I was back, but then, you know, Zion decided to show up (laughs) so I had to defer and then you know I'm still chasing this Olympic dream and all of that so it's on hold for now but that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to do because I still want to be a sports or health psychologist I still think that with the experience that I've learned on the track and in the classroom hopefully I'll add to the legacy that we have in Jamaica you know but not just in Jamaica but globally I want to lend my voice of course, to a lot of causes that are, you know, happening for, for with, with athletes and, yeah, maybe a motivational speaker. Maybe Oprah will invite me on her TV and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> she will. We're going to just put it out there. She will. Maybe. Oprah will definitely be inviting you. <laughs> manifest. Manifest. Yes, manifest. <laughs> I, I know we're a little over time. I just have a few more questions. Um, oh, really? like Just five more minutes. Okay. So, You actually, um, just in terms of preparing for any race or competition. Now we all Mm -hmm. have our go-to songs. So right now, what's on your playlist to help you mentally prepare? So my art, my playlist is not organized, right? I don't have an organized playlist. (laughs) I'm just all over the place, (laughs) right? So I have my, on my playlist, I'm always shuffling. I'm always scrolling up and clicking. I'm always doing that. I don't have a set playlist, but I'm always listening to Maverick City. Like I'm a huge Maverick City fan right now. So I get my gospel in to make sure, you know, who am I? Why am I doing this? You know, what God has given me and, you know, get all that energy in. And after I kind of soothe the soul, (laughs) I definitely go for a little upbeat, you know, kind of thing to make sure that I have the energy going. So I'm a big Burner Boy fan as well. So currently I'm listening to Level Up. I'm a huge, like I love Level Up. So yes. I'm always listening to Level Up. And I also like Summer Walker as well. Hmm. You know, I'm listening to Summer Walker as well. So yeah, so those are some of the jams I'll be listening to. Right. So <laughs> all, all the different genres, definitely. All the different genres. <laughs> <laughs> There's no set. My my thing is just all over. I'm like, and then the minute I'm two minutes in, I'm skipping to a next song <laughs> to find the next one. So yeah, maybe that's a 2022 goal to organize my playlist. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I tried that and I have some of my friends send me their playlist and I just always end up shuffling. I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm always doing that. So, yeah. Yes. And the Tokyo Olympics presented many issues regarding gender uh, equality. Now, although strides have been made, what needs to happen in sports to become more inclusive and accepting? Oh, what needs to happen? I think um, as women, we definitely need to know what we bring to, to, to our sport. And we need to start demanding that. We need to start, you know, it's not the time to be shy about what we need or what we are expecting, you know, because for far too long we have been in the shadows, you know, but it's our coming out party. And it's, it's, it's awesome for me to see other women 
you know, using their platform to enhance this message because I believe it's a message that should continue for a long time because we've been in the shadows for a long time. So it shouldn't stop. It shouldn't, it should continue. So I definitely think that we should start, you know, demanding what we need and, you know, know our worth, know what we carry to the table and who we are. And I'm hoping that more, you know, companies can include women in your advertising, include, including us in your decision making, you know, because it's important to know, okay, it's okay to know what the man thinks, but it's even better to know what the women think, you know, to know what we need, because we are showing up and we are we are dominating right now. Women are dominating in so many different fields that we deserve to have that platform. We deserve to be recognized. We deserve to, other, to have other women lead us. We deserve to have other women sit on your management team, on your advertising team. You know, we deserve to have that. So I think even though we have made strides, there's still some way to go. And I'm glad that the conversation has started because for far too long, we have, as women, we have to double the time and the effort that we have to put in to be successful. You know, and a man don't necessarily have to do as much, but we have to do so much to demand our success that I think I'm hoping that for the next couple of years to come, that definitely will be a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. I agree. I hope so too. Well, no, yeah. we're manifesting, so it will be a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> And how do you find, define success? Um, success for me is doing things my own on my own terms, you know, my own pace and achieving my, it's almost like achieving my own personal uh, gain, having my own personal gain. You know, for most women, we believe that success is collective. It's not collective. It's what it's your own time your own pace the things that you achieve and I think it's so important for us that you have small steps that get you to the you know to the bigger part of your journey than making large strides you know so that's that's for me success is doing the things that you can in your own terms in your own pace and your own time yes and also celebrating the small wins along the way. Yes, definitely celebrating that small win and never let anyone tell you what to celebrate, you know, for like you get something like, that's nothing to celebrate. Yes, it's something for me to celebrate because I, you know, I know how hard or what I had to do to get to that point. So it's okay to celebrate something that most persons think is irrelevant, but it's not irrelevant to you because it's your personal story. It's your personal success. It's your journey. So start celebrating the small moments as if you just broke a world record. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, look, I'm going to be celebrating this interview as soon as I hang up. So, <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <definitely can. laughs> and this is actually my last question. Uh, do you feel like media, particularly with the Olympics and some of your most recent races, has pit you and your competitors against one another? Yeah, and how do you sure. Handle- yeah. For sure, that's a given. Media is gonna do what media do. <laughs> They're just gonna do what they, that's. I think I guess that's their job to kind of get you know to to sell what they need to sell, and that's okay. I think for me, how I handle it is just stay true to who I am, be who I am, you know, show my personality, stand at the line, and perform and dominate. You know, I if for me, I'm not gonna stand in the shadows. I'm not gonna you know, stand at the line and act like I don't want it. I want it just as much as you do. So even though they're pitting us against each other, we're still competitive athletes. We still want to win, but we still have mutual respect for each other because, you know, you cross the line, that's it. You know, it's that's where it ends at the line. (laughs) You still have mutual respect for each other, but it's just knowing who you are and staying true to that. Don't lose sight of you know the things that you want to achieve, irrespective of what's going on in the media. It's good to you know have the media being focused on us as women and what we are bringing to the table and how we're showing up and how we're dominating. But, you know, at the same time, you just stay true to who you are and show your class and your personality in different way and just have fun. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this was such a treat. Thank you so much. This was great. Yeah, well, cool. We were able to make this happen. I know it was kind of a back and forth of scheduling. So yeah, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank and you it was so nice much. talking to you. Yes, 